Hello, Ron here uh, today. This is my uh, second flight of the uh, the new Hupson uh, Zeno 2 drone. Um, the first portion of this video is going to be uh, just the highlights of my flight, the footage, um, and we you know with some music to it, uh, you know, kind of a cinematic type of uh, video. And then the second half will be the uh, screen recording that I did during the uh, flight. So you can see all the uh, little details. I did a had to do a firmware update at one point before uh, I started the flight and uh, that went smoothly. You'll see it all in the video and uh, this is recorded on a pretty overcast day at uh, about an hour before sunset. The winds were, I had some winds but they were much milder than my uh, first flight so uh, they didn't play uh, too big of a part. Uh, I had a much better takeoff and landing than I did uh, at on my first flight uh, video. So you'll see that, in the, you know, of course, in the video also. So um, uh, basically, this is, you know, this video outside of cutting it, it's uh, it's unedited. I, I haven't color corrected anything yet, which I probably will try color correction in, on, during the next flight. But this kind of just raw video, uh, 4K 30. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy it. If you don't care about seeing the um, screen recording, you don't have to watch the second half of the video. All right, enjoy.
Okay, uh, this is the screen recording from the uh, flight, and as you can see here, it uh, you know forced me to do a firmware upgrade before I was able uh, to take off. But the upgrade went smoothly. It didn't take much longer, even though I was using the um, 4G connection from my uh, you know mobile phone here. Uh, so it went smoothly. Uh, you'll see the process here on the phone. What I did is I uh, you. Know, uh, sped it up here so you won't have to watch the whole thing upgraded. It'll, I mean, it'll go in, 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 you know, super speed time here. It's uh, version 1.19. It was for the, um, you know, the control, I mean, drone, not the controller. And it says here it optimizes flight control altitude and flight stability. And uh, the, it did seem much more stable in takeoff and landing uh, during this flight than it did at the uh, at my first test flight the day before but of course um, the, the day before on Friday the 13th I was flying an extremely high wind probably wind that I you know wouldn't have normally flown in um, and of course that being said I kept it low and close but uh, in normal conditions it wouldn't have flown the wind I flew in on Friday so um, We'll take that into account too, but again, this was much better, uh, smoother takeoff and landing, and you'll you'll see uh, the takeoff and the landing uh, both in the uh, in the video here. Um, I, I do want to say that uh, this is a, a shout out to uh, Johnny the Drone Flyer that uh, during landing uh, you have to hold the left stick down unusually long to get the motors to cut off on the Xeno Two. I've never seen a drone take that long to to cut off the uh the motors at the end of the flight and as far as i can tell neither the controller nor the app offers a um landing button they offer uh return to home uh buttons but not just a pure landing button so the only way to uh turn the motors off is to you know hold the left stick uh down uh there is no land you know usually if you have a land button you hit the land button it lands and turn the motors off but you know, so far, if this has it, we haven't found it yet. Um, so, again, that's a shout-out for Johnny the Drone Flyer, who we've been in contact with. He received his the same day as I did, and uh, you know, he's had some. He's only had DJI drones before, so he's been a, real thro a little uh, thrown off by the uh, the landing process on this, which is, um, you know, um, I, I want to say kind of unusual. I, I don't think the Xeno 1 landed badly i mean on takeoff you know it was all over the place but i don't think it it, it was as quite as squirrel in the landing as the xeno 2 is and again the thing i'm saying is based on very limited testing on a two, two test flights so uh i'm going to reserve total judgment until i i have uh, quite a few you know uh maybe weeks worth of test flights under my belt but um and i did notice in the second test flight i didn't have the um slightly crooked horizon i saw occasionally during the uh, first test flight it seems much better here and uh, i didn't do anything different um on this flight as far as calibrations or or anything um you know as far as gimbal or compass calibration but uh, the the horizon was uh i'm going to say consistently even here where again in the first flight i had a couple instances where i saw a uh, slightly crooked not as bad as crooked as the femi x8 but but crooked nonetheless so, um, and the, the thing, it flew beautifully here. I had no problems, um, you know, taking it, you know, uh, like, you know, as you can see here, way out on over the ocean here. Um, uh, this has powerful motors, so uh, a little ocean breeze doesn't really affect it much. And if you do feel a little pull, put the sport mode button on and you'll be, you know, you'll be back in, in no time at all. So, um. Uh, I'm really pleased with the the way this flies beyond the takeoff and the landing process. It uh, you know it flies uh, really nice. Um, so um, trying to I want to ramble on here.
Okay, here we're going to try some of the uh, intelligent flight modes here. I'm going to try a um, orbit mode, which is a pretty popular one here. So as we get ready to set up for the orbit mode, what happened is that uh, I didn't do the GPS accuracy test before the, um, you know, the flight started. So it's going to force me to do it, you know, in the air here, which is a good thing. I, I I'm not sure that I remember that you could do it while you were in flight on the Xeno One. So um, I'm, as you can see, it says I'm 19.3 meters away, and we're doing the uh, GPS accuracy test so that I can able the uh, the smart features, which again we we uh, I said we failed the test here. So uh, maybe we want to get a little bit closer here. See if we could pass it. So I've got it down here. We're height of uh, below 20 feet now and uh, 80, 81 feet away. Which Here we go. We're going to wish me luck this time on the uh, second test here. Okay, we were close enough. We got good GPS accuracy this time. So let's take it back up and... Uh, start this orbiting process and see how this goes. I, I, you didn't see this in the um, video at the, at the beginning here, the, uh, I'll quote the cinematic type video because I think I forgot to hit screen recording during this process. You know, some drones start automatically for you and some don't. So I think I'm always assuming it does start with, I guess in the Xeno, you had to start video manually, which I did. So we only have the screen recording of this stuff. So here we're setting the altitude and the radius uh, for the, um, orbit here and uh i i didn't really move the radios out much because uh you know i don't want to hit anything i got houses behind me we'll bump the speed up a little bit here so yeah so it uh you know the orbit feature is pretty much like on the first you know um i haven't done a Orbit with the first Xeno while, but if I remember correctly, this is almost the same exact screen as the Xeno one. All right, so we had a successful orbit test there. Now let's go. Uh, let's go look see what else we can find here. Well, we'll just do the following active track following mode. Everybody loves active track here. It's where you draw that little box under yourself, and uh, then you kind of walk around. The drone keeps track of you, so you can see a bunch of alerts popping up there. Um, start active track. So it was, a, it was, I don't think you see here, but it was a go button at one point. So you hit the go button and then you can see it found me along pretty good. I'm inside that box. So, um, and, and this feature is very similar to what was on the Xeno one, which, you know, worked, uh, you know, worked, uh, pretty good. You know, no, no real complaints with it. Uh, you know, I don't even want to compare it against other drones cause I've thought that, uh, I'm not a big active track guy. I mostly just do it for reviews. But um, so anyhow, we're we're done active tracking now. We'll just go fly a bit again here uh, down at the beach here. But um, okay, again, I don't want to ramble in here, but I wanted to point out that um, you know doing those uh, features of uh, intelligent flight modes.